This episode may contain explicit language. Welcome to Karen Feeding, the show where we raise the next generation together. I'm Elizabeth Newcamp. I write the family travel blog, Dutch Dutch Goose. I'm the mom of three littles, Henry, who's 11, Oliver, who's nine, and Teddy, who's seven. We live in Tokyo, Japan. I'm Jamila Lemieux, a writer, contributor to Slate's Karen Feeding parenting column, and mom to Naima, who's 10, and we live in Los Angeles. I'm Zach Rosen. I make another podcast. It's called The Best Advice Show, and I'm dad to Noah, who is six, and Ami, who's three. We live in Detroit. This week, we're answering a question about a kindergartner who's having trouble keeping her hands to herself. She's gotten in trouble at school for this, and her mom can't help but blame herself a little bit. We'll talk about why this might be happening and how to teach the value of the personal bubble. Then, we're going to debrief our week in parenting with a round of everyone's favorite triumphs and fails. So let's get this show on the road. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll see you back here for our listener question. This podcast is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Let's face it, sometimes multitasking can be overwhelming. Like when your favorite podcast is playing and the person next to you is talking and your car fan is blasting, all while you're trying to find the perfect parking spot. But then again, sometimes multitasking is easy, like quoting with Progressive Insurance. They do the hard work of comparing rates so you can find a great rate that works for you, even if it's not with them. Give their nifty comparison tool a try and you just may find that getting the rate and coverage you deserve is easy. All you need to do is visit Progressive's website to get a quote with all the coverages you want, like comprehensive and collision coverage or personal injury protection. Then you'll see Progressive's direct rate and their tool will provide options from other companies all lined up and ready to compare. So it's simple to choose the rate and coverages you like. Press play on comparing auto rates. Quote at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states and situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. This podcast is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Let's face it, sometimes multitasking can be overwhelming. Like when your favorite podcast is playing and the person next to you is talking and your car fan is blasting, all while you're trying to find the perfect parking spot. But then again, sometimes multitasking is easy, like quoting with Progressive Insurance. They do the hard work of comparing rates so you can find a great rate that works for you, even if it's not with them. Give their nifty comparison tool a try, and you might just find getting the rate and coverage you deserve is easy. All you need to do is visit Progressive's website to get a quote with all the coverage you want, like comprehensive and collision coverage or personal injury protection. Then you'll see Progressive's direct rate, and their tool will provide options from other companies, all lined up and ready to compare, so it's simple to choose the rate and coverages you like. Press play on comparing auto rates. Quote at Progressive.com to join the over 29 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. All right, we're back and ready to hop into our listener question. This came from the Slate Parenting Facebook group, which we'd love for you to come join if you're not already there. The question was posted by a member of the group named Chloe. Can anyone help me with conversations slash tricks slash ideas for teaching a kindergartner to keep her hands to herself? I got a call from my daughter's teacher saying that she's bugging other kids, touching them, drawing on their papers at the table, etc., and has been moved to her own personal space table. We're a very cuddly family, and she was a longtime nurser, so I partially blame myself. What can I do to help the situation on our side? Zach, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I think the first thing to do is absolve yourself about this thing you're saying. uh, You're a very cuddly family, and your kid was a longtime nurser, so, so you're blaming yourself for this. I don't know if this is how kids... Um, you know, become become overly handsy. Uh, so I, I don't think that that loving your kid a lot is is something to blame yourself for. Um, there are a couple books that you should consider reading to your kid. Both of them uh, about about personal space. One of them is called Personal Space Camp. It's a picture book about respecting others' physical boundaries. It's by the author Julia Cook. And then there's another one that I found. Um, called Personal Space Invader by Christiane Jones. And you're going to, to read these books with your kid and, and just kind of talk about boundaries 
seeing it in a picture book, I think is going to be really helpful for for a, a five year old. And I've also seen that um, some kids are just going to be handsy and craving sensation um, in ways that other kids aren't. I feel weird about the kid being isolated. I feel I feel weird about your daughter um, having to draw at their own table. Like I understand that it yes. might be frustrating for other kids to have their pictures drawn on, but I, I, I feel like isolating, um, especially from the age of five, I don't know how this is gonna be. So I would suggest this is perhaps more a suggestion for the teacher that perhaps you could talk to the teacher about find the kids who are like less distressed when their drawing gets drawn on and like put your kid at a table with them and the kids who are like okay with with being touched while also simultaneously having these conversations reading these books about boundaries and about personal space something i agree with you zach something rubs me the wrong way about isolating this kid too you know, I mean, I think it's one thing if it's like, OK, there's been an incident. So today you're going to be at the personal space table. But for you to be permanently at the personal space table just feels sort of cruel for somebody who obviously craves connection from other children. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree with, you know, reading the books and talking to the teacher and just letting your little one know that, like, not everyone likes to be touched and that's okay. And you have to get people's permission to touch them. You know, like you may have a close friend in the classroom and you can say, can I have a hug? And they'll give you a hug and it's fine. But somebody else may feel differently, you know, but um, also letting her know that there are other ways to show affection to people. You know, like you can draw a picture for your friends. You could tell them how much you like their hair. You tell them you're excited to see them. Um, but the physical touch isn't the only way to show affection and care. And in the classroom, it's not the primary way you want to do it. You save that for home. I agree with all of this. I think this is really good advice. I want to consider the perspective that this has nothing to do with coming from a loving home, that the child is not fully in control, because perhaps what we are dealing with is some kind of neurodivergence in which there is some tactile um, stimming, like the need to have more feedback um, from the environment by touching things. Uh, Perhaps there is some attention issues. And so these are the ways that the child is actually uh, trying to engage in the classroom. So their their brain is sort of needs this additional, I'm going to touch this, I'm going to get additional stimuli, I'm going to color on this. Just the, the idea of self-control and and those boundaries are not fully formed because for a lot of our neurodivergent kids like these social boundaries are not there and i think that in particular is why as you both mentioned this idea of putting this kid at their own table and being like you are bad the things that you do are bad they're so bad that you have to sit over Mm -hmm. there when in fact, what I see is like a kid who needs some other things. So I totally agree with meeting with the teacher and perhaps even investigating school philosophy into into this personal space table, because I wonder if whatever your school provides for either special needs or someone coming in to the classroom, like instead of this, can they take a movement break? Is there a sensory place that they can go? Would a fidget solve the problem? Like a lot of time, these kids are just looking for that. There's also, if, if this is a consistent problem, and when I say these things, you all of a sudden are like, oh my gosh, my child does do a lot of this. Again, occupational therapy has an entire kind of section that works on the social behavior. Um, I This still, I mean, this kid is still young. Kindergarten is still a place where we're learning this. Right. So I don't know that you necessarily need to like run and get your child into occupational therapy, but I would look at something called the Superflex team. And this is something you can start to do at home. Specifically, this behavior falls under um, Space Invader. Like he's the the way that a child is dealing with these social things by being in everybody else's space. And if you Google that, there are a million resources for how to deal with a child um, that is that needs some tools against the space invader. I also think, again, just look at meeting some of those sensory needs in other ways. But I will say that as we, 
it's the behavior like putting them at a table that starts to lead a lot of these kids to think that they are bad Mm -hmm. kids or to not like school. So I think that that is actually what what needs to be um, addressed here. I completely agree, though, like we should also at kindergarten be talking about boundaries and self-control and consent like that needs to go hand in hand just because your child is having a hard time with it does not mean that they cannot understand what consent is we have a space invader in our house that loves to like be up on us and getting that tactile stimulation and honestly it was a little bit of peer pressure in school that helped um or like around other kids but also the game red light green light at this at this age is a really good way to just practice those turn off and on the boundaries and having fun. So getting them to like move and then stop, move and then stop. Yeah. You can do that with um, paper. You can do that with like the traditional That's running game. I, I think playing games like that at home might be a way to kind of reinforce this. What do you think about weighted blankets? Oh my God, I love a weighted blanket. Like Who doesn't love a weighted blanket, especially for a, a sensory hungry kid? That might be a nice, a nice thing to look forward to in the yeah. evenings. There's a million great sensory things like for school. There's lap blankets. There's, um, you know, things you can touch, things you can chew. Again, one of the advantages of going to occupational therapy is that they try. All, they have everything. They try everything with your kid. And then they say to you, these are the six that work really well yeah. um, for him or her. And that was helpful for me because I didn't have to go buy everything. They were just like, this kid really turns out is a like is more into the oral stuff. So mm-hmm. giving him something to chew stopped all additional touching. It was just like, once that was fulfilled, done. Yeah. Which brings, which makes me think like, even if you, if you do go to an occupational therapist, it might just need like a session or two. It's not like you're signing up for indefinite therapy, right? Exactly. And you can go to, um, of course, when you go to occupational therapy, they have you fill out all this paperwork, but you can mm-hmm. find those same kind of evaluations online and sort of take a look of them at them because they do divide it into like this child is a sensory seeker, this child is an oral sensory seeker, this child is a you know whatever they need so helpful. gross motor. Yeah. Um. But that might help you kind of look to a- and decide what you need for this. They call it like a sensory diet. I'm not suggesting that any of that replaces occupational therapy, but it might be a really good place to start. Yeah. To just say like, can I fix some of these these small things to see if this is what the issue is or is it just an issue of like a kid that doesn't have a lot of boundaries or something at home or isn't used to those and is trying to figure out where that line is all right well we'd love to know if anyone out there has successfully taught a kid the power of the personal bubble you can email us at karenfeedingpod at slate.com leave a comment on the slate parenting facebook page or if you really want to make us happy tell us your story by leaving us a voicemail you don't have to actually talk to anyone to do it and we really love hearing your voice so give it a try you can call 646-357-9318 all right we're going to take another quick break and we'll be back in a second We're back and moving on to a segment we call Triumphs and Fails. Jamila, do you have a triumph or a fail for us this week? I have a fail. So it, we've had some pretty bad rain in L.A. for the past few days. Oh, yeah, I've been hearing about that. Um, which is usually not a thing. We don't get a lot of rain in Southern California. And... On Friday, um, I got Naima to school about 15 minutes late, and, you know, traffic was bad, and it was wet and scary, and while we're driving there, she gets texts from, like, five of her friends, and they're all like, are you going to school today? No, I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm like, what? So... It turns out that like six kids from her class didn't go to school on Friday because of the rain. And the teacher was late because Naima texted me when she got in class like, teacher's not even here. But then like she ended up coming later. Uh And so I didn't regret bringing her because like the rain, you know, it stopped raining. It was fine. You know, it was cold, but. um, It's rain. It's rain. Like, I'm from Chicago. I went to school in all kinds of inclement weather. I climbed through snow, you Uh know, like. Yeah. Yeah. Uphill. Yeah. Uphill. So 
there was like all these warnings about flash flooding and all this stuff for Monday and that it was going to, you know, there was going to be like six more inches of rain. It was going to be terrible. And so when we woke up, it was raining pretty hard. And so I was like, you know what? You don't have to go to school. And it rained. It was nasty. It rained hard all day yesterday. And Les Kiss stayed home because when she was texting with her friends, like it wasn't all of them that had been home the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, but her teacher didn't go. And I feel like she mi- I let her miss a day of school for nothing. And mm-hmm. part of it was just that I just didn't feel like getting up. And I was like, fine, it's raining. We don't have to go. And I stayed in bed all day. And Naima got a rain day. And the teacher didn't come. Maybe she lived somewhere that were it could have been dangerous, you know. Um, so I do feel a little bit better that the teacher wasn't there. Yeah. But I basically feel like Naima got a day off of school for nothing. I do think that since there was a sub that basically she didn't miss anything. Yeah, like cancels it out. Yeah, it, it kind of does cancel it out. Were the conditions really bad? Because I know that there were some areas that were super affected but not terrible but like people in la don't really know how to drive in the rain so it can Mm -hmm. be a little intense you know like we were driving on friday i was kind of like oh this really sucks and i need new windshield wipers and i don't know how like to do that like if i buy them i have to like put them on myself and i don't know no 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 uh like like pep boys or whoever you buy them and they'll come put them on right at your car really you don't have to do any of that. Okay. They will do it for you. Okay. Like at a, like at a, I don't, is there the pet boy, whatever the California equivalent like of. Like AutoZone maybe? Is. Yes, yeah, AutoZone. Like They'll do it They'll for you. you. Okay. You just ask. You can even go in and say, I need new wipers. And then they will come out to your car and show you uh, which wipers. Okay. That's good. To that know. kind of stuff is always what I need when Jeff is out of town. And I feel sad that I know nothing about how to do that. But the friendly people at your car store know how and will do it for you. Okay, that's good to know. I feel like because of this extreme California weather, you can let yourself off the hook a little bit. Okay. Are you more just upset that you... Because I, I feel like the thing is, she like has your number on the missing school. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't seem that important to you either. Like, Not that school is not important. I know that you believe that school and education are very important. But... I think you also understand there's like a lot of days. There's, and so, yeah. <laughs> like, what's it like? We all don't want to do stuff some days. Yeah. But do you then like have the mom guilt about is that what's happening? Like, you just feel like, oh, I should have made her go. Yes. There was a sub. There was I a mean, sub. Just, yeah. I feel like subs, those are not real days. Like, everyone is just like, why are we here I'm when sorry. you have a sub? I'm sorry, substitute teachers, but it's true. No, it's not your fault, but like, substitutes but it's like a really hard to come into a class and try to like pick up where somebody else left off and do someone else's stuff you know Mm -hmm. do you remember the feeling when a substitute came in especially for a class that you didn't like it's it's glorious it's the best feeling somebody better go wheel down the tv from the av room yes i was just thinking that giant shit today (laughs) (laughs) oh my goodness all right zach triumph or fail This is a triumph on behalf of the institution of Shiva. Shiva is the seven-day mourning period um, that Jews, some Jews, uh, observe after someone dies. And so uh, I mentioned last week that my aunt just died. And so after the funeral, people get together at the family member's house um, of the deceased, and you just talk, talk about your deceased relative, you do some prayers, you just spend time together. Um, and so my mom hosted Shiva f- for my aunt. It was uh, her brother's wife who died. And so my mom hosted it. And all of last week, um, my kids and my cousin's kids and uh, my aunt's friends and other members of our family, we just like gathered. And I took a couple days off work. And it's funny that this... this uh, triumph comes on the heels of that last listener question about you know what happens when we isolate the student um at our own table it's like what we need most in in times of distress is each other and shiva is just like such a beautiful example to me of like just gathering in sorrow this is like the most consecutive days i've ever like spent with my family we did it for 
four days. We didn't do it for all seven. But there were like five nights at my mom's house of just these really great dinners where we were just talking about my aunt and the kids were around playing with their cousins. And it was like, it was medicine. It was it was so special just to to be with each other. And I'm just kind of grateful for, for the uh, religion I happen to be born in. Glad to have exposed Noah just to like kind of that that feeling it was just like communal sadness but also there was so much laughter telling old stories and I was, I was so glad for them to to kind of be enveloped in that space it's really beautiful that you all set out so much time for grieving you know yeah I think we need it like you you know you're in shock for the first couple of days if not if not more and yeah it's like what's uh what's more important you, you know than grieving and grieving our loved ones and it was it was really nice for that to be kind of the only thing happening in our in our world last week. Yeah, it's lovely, and I love that like the children are a part of it. I don't like so often we push that stuff to like adults, um, but for them to be able to see kind of like the processing and be part of it and be around family and people that loved. I don't. I don't. I feel like it gives us this sense like not only that you're taking care of in your grief, but also this sense of like, we have so much fear about death, like that there are all these people on earth that love you, that almost like when it's your turn, like these will be the people gathered for you. There's something very like, I think satisfying and lovely about that. Totally agree, yeah. How about you, Elizabeth? What have you got, triumph or fail? I'm taking a triumph, Um, but the triumph started many months back with a pretty epic fail back when it was still warm and we were still new to Tokyo. So I'll say a few months ago. Mm -hmm. We were kind of trying to find like a routine where after school, we're really struggling with like the after school time, the kids could go have some playtime. And and one of the things we used to do all the time in Colorado and in Florida before that was we love to like go to the park and play different just like games. Uh, One of them being Frisbee. And Jeff has loved Frisbee forever and had these aero bee frisbees which are these like they have holes in the center they fly super far they come in all these shapes and we love these things uh but they require a very large space like even someone that doesn't know how to throw a frisbee can get these up quite high which is why they're great with kids i think i've even like recommended them on this podcast because we love them so much Mm -hmm. they are more expensive than your regular frisbee and i saw the kids heading outside with the frisbees they were like we're gonna go play and by boys, I mean Jeff also. And I am like, you guys, this is where are you going to play the Frisbee? We like don't have big parks here. <laughs> and Jeff's like, we're just going to throw it on the street. And I'm like, this is a terrible idea. A terrible, terrible, terrible idea. There's there's no way this ends up well. Sure enough, they are not outside a minute before Oliver runs into the house. He is crying, crying, crying. <laughs> yeah. He released the Frisbee on the street. Predictably, it flew up several stories and landed on the roof. And the children are, not our roof, like somebody else's roof. So the the children are like begging Jeff to go ring up the doorbell. It's like, even if we do this, these are large, some of these are large apartment buildings. We weren't sure exactly what roof we were on. Even if we could find it and, and then somehow communicate with the people, there's no way to get onto these roofs. Like this is not a, uh, you know, like go out a bedroom window or something. Like yeah. like you just can't get onto these tall roofs. Yeah. We have been like looking for this Frisbee, like looking up on roofs. We have every windstorm. We've like been looking, hoping it would blow down. Mm. Nothing. My in-laws, having heard the story about this, buy Jeff a new pack of these Aerobees. And I immediately, after we open them, take them and put them up in the attic. And I think th- these will come back out when we move from here. Like, they are not in Japan right. away. Okay, fast forward. We had a kind of epic snowstorm in Tokyo, which never happens. We had all this snowfall. The kids got us a day off of school yesterday. Um, we are walking down the street. And, like, the, the roofs here are very steep. Yes, this huge me. thing of snow slides off and it makes this noise and we all jump back and when it hits the ground from the center of it yes. is our aerobee yes 
And we wow. are, the kids are all like screaming and <laughs> celebrating on the street. <laughs> like we have, it doesn't matter that we got new ones. We got this back. Of course, oh, they immediately so are like, let's go to the park. <laughs> and we are like, no, no, this is not a toy for here. But we have uh, our Arrow B has been returned. I feel like this amazing sense that we got this off this Tokyo roof. Like we're not leaving anything behind. Um, it was a beautiful gift from the from the snow day. That's a, a Frisbee miracle. It's a Frisbee miracle. Oh, I see. Th- these are good Frisbees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at them now. Yeah, you can, you can I remember these. Things. Yeah. They're amazing. Yeah. If you are if you do not live in a city or you live in a city with a large park, these will be perfect for so you. Good. Yeah. They really are amazing. There's like a triangle one that kind of comes back. You can really launch these mm-hmm. and they're easy to catch because you can grab them. I mean, I'm just like a huge fan of the Aerobee. Uh, so much so that we were sad to have to have lost one, even though we replaced it. Ah, but we got it back. I feel great. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, snow tumbling from the roof. <laughs> All right, listeners. Well, as always, we want to hear your parenting stories, too. Do you have a particularly great triumph or a funny fail? You can share them with us, and we might share them on the show. We really, really, really love hearing from you. And we want all of you to hear from each other, too. So before we go, it's time to open up our mini mailbag and share some advice that you've sent us. Earlier this week, we shared ideas for how to get a fourth grader to spend her downtime on something other than screens. But one of you emailed us with some important perspective. About 30-ish years ago, I came home off the bus by myself in fifth grade with my sister. We got a snack, did homework, and watched TV until our parents came home. And we weren't watching quality TV. We were watching Total Request Live. Well, my sister was. I hated that show, so I'd boot up the computer and play Civilization. Is this really that different than what this fourth grader is experiencing? Not all screens are built equally. I'm trying to stop vilifying screen time in general and just tailor what screen time is acceptable. I totally watch TRL after school. I watch Jerry Springer. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh, sure. Man, Jerry Springer was huge. I appreciate this this reality check. Like we were telling this parent to like relegate it to one hour instead of two. My mom was working. My dad was working. I, I watched as much TV as I wanted. Um, so I, I I get that too. I do. Yeah, a little perspective is always good. Yeah. Well, we of course want to know what you think, so be sure to reach out and keep the conversation going. And that's our show. Subscribe, leave a rating and review, and tell your friends. If you want more parenting advice, you can find Karen feeding the column on Slate.com. This episode of Karen Feeding is produced by Maura Curry, with special thanks to Rosemary Belson. Shasha Leonard is the voice of our listeners. Alicia Montgomery is the VP of Slate Audio. For Jamila Lemieux and Zach Rosen, I'm Elizabeth Newcamp. Thanks for listening. Be warned. The ones who pick up a refreshingly cold drink from McDonald's and people see just how refreshingly cold that drink from McDonald's is... You may create drink envy because there are drinks, then there are drinks from McDonald's. For a morning brew that really creates a stir, get any size iced coffee, including caramel and French vanilla, for just 99 cents before 11 a.m. Price and participation may vary, cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal.